Um, this is our time for welcome and announcements. Are there any announcements that need to be made? I want to remind the ladies that Wednesday is our uh, Fruit of the Soul, and this time we're going to meet in the parish hall and bring a salad to pass and have a mini salad lunch. So I hope you'll join us at 11 Anyone else? Announcements? Well, it's good to see all of you. I'm very happy to welcome you all. It, it seems a little more appropriate for me to welcome you now that I've been here one more Sunday. Uh, and uh, thank you for making me feel very welcome here also. Um, I think we have, do we have a praise hymn prepared? Do we have a praise hymn prepared? Yes, Lord, I lift your name on high. Yes. Yep. So now it is time for that.
the psalmist said, while I kept silence, my strength faded away as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. As the psalmist approached God, let us also do so, and confess our sins to God. Please read with me. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of God. Friends, happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity. <coughs> Alleluia. Amen. <laughs> We have two readings. Let's begin with a little prayer. Lord God, we have come here to sing your praise. We have come here to, uh, to pour out our hearts before you. We have come here out of love for you. But we have come here also because we want to feel your presence among us and to hear your word in our ear. So help us to, to open our hearts, to listen with our ears and our hearts, and to hear your voice, and in, this, in doing so, to feel your presence with us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts bring you glory and joy. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Joel, the second chapter, verses 1 and 2 and 12 through 17. Please listen for the word of God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. Like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes, such as never was of old, nor even will be in ages to come. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning, 
Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may, he may turn and have pity and leave a blessing behind. Grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Consecrate the assembly. Bring together the elders. Gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep before the temple porch and the altar. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say, Among the peoples, where is their God? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the letter of James, uh, from the fifth chapter, verses 7 through 12. Please listen for the word of God. Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord is coming near. Don't grumble against each other, brothers, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. Let your yes be yes and your no be no, or you will be condemned. This is the word of God. Years ago, when I was in elementary school, I got in trouble one day. And I didn't really understand how I got in trouble. There was a substitute teacher and she sent me to the principal's office for being disrespectful. Now, my regular teacher would not have done that for the same behavior because in fact, I was not being disrespectful. I had been answered a question which required a, a positive or negative answer, and I answered yes. This substitute teacher had a different sense of what was respectful and disrespectful because she determined that because I had not said yes ma'am, I was being disrespectful. Whereas I was never taught to say yes sir and yes ma'am. That was not the case. I, being, you know, a little ashamed of being in trouble at all, never told my parents about that until years later. <laughs> and my father said, in fact, um, if, if it had come down to it, he, he thinks he would have brought forth this last verse of James that we read. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. There's no ma'am. There's no sir in there at all. Part of the theme of today's reading is the coming of the day of the Lord. And in fact, that is a theme that you see many times throughout the prophets and other parts of the Bible. In the, in, in the book of Jeremiah, uh, the phrase, the days are surely coming says the Lord, occurs 11 times, and in, in chapter uh, 31, three times, just in that one chapter, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel 
and the house of Judah with the seed of humans and the seed of animals, and just as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to overthrow, destroy and bring evil, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and Judah, the house of Judah. And I will put my law within them, I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And a little bit later, the days are surely coming, when, says the Lord, when the city shall be rebuilt for the Lord from the tower of Hananel to the corner gate. In many places, many places, we are told to look for this day with gladness and hope. We see in places where the prophets are remembered in the New Testament, we see this also. Jesus, when he goes to preach in his hometown of Nazareth in Luke, he reads from the Bible, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery to the sight of the blind and let the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. It sounds so positive, doesn't it? Good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. But we remember, don't we, that Jesus' discussion with them about this then leads them to wanting to take him to the edge of the hill and throw him off. Someone posted something recently about Judy Garland, and I went to look at some of her music to sort of recall. I've not really been a big Judy Garland fan. I liked uh, the, the Wizard of Oz, but the, the over-stylized uh, 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 sort of uh, way that she came to sing as she, as she matured um, just isn't, isn't my style. But I looked at a, I looked at a, a, a video on YouTube of her singing, uh, get, Come On, Get Happy. Forget your troubles, come on, get happy. You better chase all your cares away. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for the judgment day. The sun is shining, come on, get happy. The Lord is waiting to take your hand. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. We're going to the promised land. It is unmistakable that the coming day, even though it is called Judgment Day, is a time of joy here. The second chapter of Joel, though, proclaims that the day of the Lord is coming, but it does not seem quite as joyful does not seem quite as joyful. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountain. A great and powerful army comes, their light has never been from old, nor will again after them in ages to come. Fire devours in front of them, and behind them a flame burns. Before them the land is like the Garden of Eden, but after them a desolate wilderness, and nothing escapes them. Now in the book of Joel, we see a situation in which God's people and the land that God has given them have been uh, severely afflicted. In the first chapter, God says, Hear this, O elders, give ear, all inhabitants of the land, has such a thing happened in your days or in the days of ancestor, your ancestors. Tell your children of it, let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. What the cutting locust left the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left, the hopping locust has eaten. 
with the hopping locust left, the destroying locust has eaten. Wake up, you drunkards, and weep, and wail all you wine drinkers over the sweet wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. The prophet declares that a great army has invaded the land, but he talks in terms of locusts. Biblical scholars agree that this is uh, probably a reference to some historical event, but they are split over whether it is a, whether it is a military metaphor used for an agricultural disaster, or an agricultural metaphor used uh, to describe uh, a military invasion. It could be the invasion that led to the uh, deportation to Babylon, but it could be something that happened earlier before that. And we don't know the date that Joel was written, because it never really mentions the deportation to Babylon. So maybe it was written prior to that. The thing is that many times we suffer misfortune. Many times we, and if you look in the, in the Psalms, you'll also see this, where the, the psalmist is is talking about the misfortune that uh, that he or his people have suffered and they pray for God to come in judgment and the thing is many times when we do this we believe that when judgment does come it will always go against those people who are our adversaries always against them we never seem to pray for judgment to come against us do we no but the prophet Joel, rather than saying that when this judgment comes, everything will be made uh, happy and joyful again, he tells them that the day of the Lord is coming, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Likewise, James tells his audience, you must always, you must also be patient Strengthen your hearts for the coming of the Lord. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the door. Joel's audience, James's audience, and we too must not assume that judgment is only against our adversaries. We too have strayed from the paths of righteousness. We too have earned the condemnation that we might receive. But Joel's proclamation is still good news. Why is it good news? It's good news because Joel is telling us it's not too late. Joel says, yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts, not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. He relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering, and a drink offering for the Lord your God. It's not too late, because our Lord is loving, as God, as, as God showed in coming to live among us, in giving of his life for ours. God showed that there he is, if we return to God, a way, a promise that God returns to us. So even though we are told to tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, even though we are told that we should be fasting and weeping and mourning, nonetheless, we should rejoice. We should rejoice because God promises to return to us if we return to Him. So let us be joyful. Our next hymn is number 175, O Lord, Our Lord.
seated. We come to our time for sharing our joys and concerns with the, of the congregation. Are there joys and concerns you wish to share? Remember, as we do this, that this will be going out over the internet, and, and if someone's privacy is uh, of a concern, maybe only use their first name or, or something. Anybody? Well, I'm gratified that there's not many concerns, but I'm disappointed there are not more joys. No, uh, we all should rejoice in sharing all of our concerns also, because that is a way that God's mercy uh, is, is measured out through us to one another. Um, we have... We do have the we do have the prayers uh, that are mentioned on the other side, um, but if we have no additional joys and concerns, let us then pray. Lord God, we are grateful for many blessings that you have showered upon us. We're grateful for the the beautiful days that you give us. We are have some concern about some of our neighbors in the in the heat and we ask that you keep everyone safe from the heat these days we're grateful that the sun shines upon the crops and helps them to grow we are grateful for the rain when it falls that helps all of our uh, lives be greener touched by the, the growth of your miraculous plants. We are, uh, we come to you uh, knowing that we are called to live uh, very good lives and that we all, we fall short and we are grateful that you uh, have judgment, but we are grateful also for the steadfast mercy and love that you have shown us. We ask that you watch over this congregation. We ask that you watch over its members and keep us healthy and give us mercies on uh, health and other things that we need. There are some who cannot be among us today because of their health concerns and we ask that you watch over them. Visit your healing hand upon them. Help us to be to remain connected with them either by us going to them or by uh, them recovering and returning to be among us. We ask that you watch over us in this time of uh, coronavirus and keep us safe and help us uh, get to a place where, where we can go out and feel safe and do things and know that we are safe. Um, help us to recover from all of that. We ask that you watch over this community. Uh, help, um, help the people who are struggling within this community to do to find opportunities and to do better. Help the people who are doing well to use what you have given them to help other people also to show your love for all of your people. We ask that you watch over our state and our nation. Help us to do things that promote justice and well-being. Help those who are in positions of power to use those power in ways that honor you and honor our image, your image in all of us. We ask that you watch over the world. We know there are places where there is war, that uh, we pray that peace might come. We know there are places of, of hunger and famine, and we ask that uh, 
sufficient and even plenty might be found there. We ask that you inspire those who have to share what they have, what you have granted them with those who do not have enough. We ask that you, you, um, you lead us, that you bring about among us uh, justice and love and mercy over the whole face of the earth. We bring you the names of people who we have named on the back of our bulletin, names that are in our hearts, and we ask for your mercy on them. And we bring all of these names to you in prayer. And we pray in the name in, in the name of your uh, Son who came and lived among us and showed us how to live and taught us to pray these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory, We're not uh, going among you with uh, the offering basket. It can be found at the back. But please, uh, it is right that we should share a portion of the blessings that God has given us for God's use in this place. So please, as you are moved, uh, give to the morning offering.
is coming, it is surely coming. Uh, in fact, to some extent it comes every day. God comes to us uh, at a time of judgment to each of us according to the schedule that he has made for all of us. And we should be prepared for that. We should be prepared by uh, turning to God, returning to God, so that God will return to us and doing what is righteous for God because of the faith that God has given us, because of the love that God has shown to us in coming to us in Jesus Christ. So let us be prepared for that. Let us be prepared and blow the trumpet and sound the, uh, the, the alarm that the day of the Lord, the alarm but the joy that the day of the Lord has come. So go out into the world in peace, have courage, hold on to what is good, return no one evil for evil, support the weak and help the suffering. Honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.